You must be born again. We see Jesus being confronted by a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus. At night, we don't know why he came at night. It could be a variety of reasons. This man was a man of standing. It could have been to save face, or most likely, he wanted to have a one-to-one time with Jesus away from the crowds. He begins by saying how much admiration he has for Jesus, but Jesus goes straight to the point in the concern of his heart. Verse 3, Jesus answered him and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus has just said, we believe you are who you say you are because nobody can do what you've done unless God is with him. We have seen, we have seen what you've done. And Jesus says, you haven't seen anything because you need to be born again in order to be given eyes to truly see. This whole idea of being born again. In the Old Testament, there are those moments for Saul, for David, where God comes upon people and they are transformed. They are made a new man, is some of the language that is being used. And so Jesus says, unless you are born from above or born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I want you to think about who he's saying this to. I told you Nicodemus was a man of quite high standing. That's an understatement. He is the teacher of Israel. Who's that? Stephen Hawking? Who's that? Um, John MacArthur, pastor of the church, thousands of members, and a, a biblical scholar. It is like Jesus went to John MacArthur and said, you must be born again. A fundamental change must happen in your orientation in life. You, you must come to the place where you are no longer living for yourself, where the center of your universe is not you, but God alone. You must be impacted by the grace of God that would extend to you such an invitation, such a command to come to him. And by his grace, you must have come. You must be born again. <laughs> Nicodemus didn't fully get it at this point. Do you get it? Do you get it? Has there been a time in your life where you were born again? You were given a former life. Somebody says, uh, it was my time B.C., before Christ. Do you have a before Christ now? You know, that before Christ could be any time in your life. It could be when you're 70, when you're 40, when you're 30, when you are one, or it could be even in the womb, as was the case with John the Baptist. He was filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. But you must be born again. God does not have any grandchildren. He has sons, sons and daughters. Are you born again? Have you been confronted with King Jesus and with your own sin and your need of forgiveness, have you experienced that forgiveness? Have you experienced that grace? And are you living out your born-again life now, still walking in grace? Or have you gone back to your patterns of trying to earn your salvation? Come on now. <laughs> but especially right now, I want to focus on the idea of being born again. I want to tell you today, as far as I know, I was not born again until in junior high school. I had gone to church my entire life. I had been going to church since I was in my mother's room, but I wasn't really confronted with Christ. I didn't meet him in a real way till I was in my puberty. Many, many people, I know people who got so involved in religion, so in love with the concepts of Christianity, they went to seminary, and at seminary they were confronted with the God of grace and were born again in th while training for the ministry. So maybe you've been going to church your entire life. Maybe it was this kind of a 
it would be an embarrassing thing for anybody to know that you are just now come to faith in Jesus. There is no shame. There is no embarrassment in that. And not your parents, not your children, not your brothers, sisters, or friends. Nobody can go to heaven for you. Nobody can know Jesus in your stead. You must know him. You must love him. You must taste and experience true eternal life. Loved one, you must be born again. And I pray that you are. And I pray that you are living it day by day. But if you are not, if you say to me today, I don't have a relationship with King Jesus, you can. Trust in him as your Lord and Savior. To as many as believed him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Anyone who comes to me, Jesus says, I, there's no way that I will turn him away. Some people are wondering, I keep on coming, I keep on coming to Jesus, and I, and I still don't have any assurance that I belong to him. Trust in his promise. Trust in his promise. Don't belittle his love for you. If you have confessed the Lord Jesus with your mouth, believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you are saved. And eternal life doesn't begin when you die. Eternal life has already begun. And if you can lose your eternal life, it was not eternal in the first place. Eternal life is eternal by definition. It's just logical. And you have passed, past tense, from death into life if you are born again. And life has a name. His name is Jesus. If you are in him, you are truly born again. Are you? To many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God. All right. One of the things that really keeps me up at night is, to, is the thought that there may be somebody within the sound of my voice either in this congregation, in this room, or through the medium of video that has not truly trusted in Jesus and, are, and is not really living the born-again life. Maybe even living under the delusion that religiosity, churchianity suffices. Nope. Only Christianity, only knowing Jesus, only being born again produces life eternal. And here's a good question. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, a scholar, very, very religious, a lifer in the church like many of you and me. Did Nicodemus really come to faith? Did he trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior? Was he really a disciple? The Bible leaves us with no doubt. He was one of the two, along with Joseph of Arimathea, who took the body of Jesus and gave him a proper burial. When there were no other disciples to be seen, besides the women, the eleven were gone. Joseph and Nicodemus were there. The Pharisees were there. And there's hope for the Pharisee. There's hope for those who are caught up in religi religiosity. And there are hope. there's hope for the most irreligious among us. When we hear him say, you must be born again. Let's embrace it. And by his grace, be born again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that there would not be one missing. King Jesus, you were able to confess that you had lost none. And it's my heart's prayer that we here would not lose one. So King Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would call us if there's anybody here, Lord, within the sound of my voice who has not trusted you as Lord and Savior, turning their back on all their sin, selfishness, and every other idol, and trusted you alone, I pray that through this time we've sent, spent together that you would cause that miracle, that miracle, the movement of your spirit to happen now. And Lord, we confess once again, as we did the very first time when we were born again, that you are Lord. 
and you are Lord of all of our life. Sometimes we have not acted that way. We have crawled back to the, to the lords that we have served before. But no, no. Most fundamentally, this has not changed. This has not changed. The love that you have placed in our hearts for you has not changed because you caused us to be born again. And you finished the work you began. So trusting in you, believing in you, celebrating you, looking forward to all that you will do among us here at the house and with all those within the sound of my voice, and especially that one that is doubting his or her salvation right now. Oh, King Jesus, remind him or her of the eternal identity of a born-again child of God, that even now, in the struggle and doubt, that person has. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we ask of you this day, come and heal our land. Knit our hearts together that your glory might be seen in us. Then the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us be one voice that glorifies your name. Let us be one voice declaring that you reign. Let us be one voice in love. Grant us unity. Now is the time for you and I to join our hearts in praise. That the name of Jesus will be lifted high above the earth. Then the world will know that Jesus Christ is. Pray, O oh God, grant us you.